How y'all doing? I'm Reginald Bullock here with Trey for Just Living Life, and this is our second yep. time recording. So thank you for rejoining us. And Trey, what do you have to say? I got a question. Like, should we call this episode two or episode one? I had a person as episode one because it was, you know, the pilot was the last time. So that's why I just wanted to make sure. You said two, but you know, they might have gotten confused. So I just want to make sure they understand. I cla- I was gonna classify as episode one. You got any problems with that? I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Now, the difference is though, suppose we edit it and break it into different sections. Mm. Like the first one we did was pretty long. It was pretty how good. many? How long was it? I think I had like 23 to 26 segments out of that. <laughs> yeah. So is each segment an episode? It's uh, like the overall thing would be an episode. Each one, each smaller piece, each smaller video would be a segment in itself. So that's what it'll be. But each overall video, like the long one, that hour long, two hour so long. E1, possibly, yeah. S1, E1, S2, yeah. E1, S3. So this is E2. This will be E. We'll make this one E1. Let's make this one E1. What was the last one? The pilot, E0. Okay. <laughs> This is us, you know, just living life here with Trey. And this is reality. And and the thing that we wanted to do was to have two people who are not necessarily putting things together in a static way that, you know, we rehearsed this for days and days and days. And now you're getting the show based on how we rehearsed it. No, you're getting authentic, real talk from real brothers who live real life because we just live. And we're sharing it with you. And what you just heard is an example of just how things come together. Yeah. And that's re- that's the reality of how things come together in life. So. Exactly. Exactly. That was a very ad hoc question. <laughs> it was a very high ad hoc question I gave you. But I didn't want to talk about too much about how we live it. Okay. Because you know, they they probably just waiting to see what we're talking about. I don't want I don't want to bore them too well, much. Well, let's get right? I don't want to bore them too much. What do we but want to talk about this time? I wanted to talk about this, right? Because you know it. Last episode was good. It was a pilot. You know, we're we're building. We're laying that foundation. So that's the topic right now that I want to talk about. Topic number one, foundation. Building foundation. that foundation. Yeah. And when I mean by foundation, I'll give my definition. I kind of wrote some things down here. For a little All right. What's your definition on foundation? So like when, when I say foundation, I mean that baseline makeup of yours, if you will, that guideline for yourself, if you will. Like when I when I'm in audit, I, I think of like, you know, the standards and guidelines that you have to follow. That, right. You get a clean opinion. Exactly. So that, that so that foundation that you have to follow, that's what I think of when I say foundation. What, 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 what comes to your mind when you think of foundation, building that foundation? Well, I think that it starts with what you bring to the table initially. Mm-hmm. Because you talk about building the foundation, but generally people have something already. Mm-hmm. So they have a foundation. So to your point, what's the baseline? What are you already working with? Exactly. The other piece is, what are you trying to build? What's the strategic plan? What's your aim? What's your goal? What's your objective? Because therein lies, if you're building a house, all right, you know, what kind of house are you building? Are you building a house up north where heating and air conditioning and, and, and protection from the cold is one thing? Mm-hmm. Or are you building a house in the south where you can actually run your hand through the house because you're not really worried about the cold, but you do need to be worried about hurricanes and things like that. So that whole foundation piece, education, training, mm-hmm. development, mm-hmm. Uh, environment, culture. Your emotional intelligence, confidence, confidence, strength. Um, do you know how to dress appropriately? So what do you come to the table with when you're trying to do something? And if you're trying to build a business, a whole different structure of a foundation. If you're trying to be a professional in one of the, you know, doctor, lawyer, or yep. one of those certified types of possessions, professions, then what's the foundation for that, right? Mm-hmm. You can't just go and, and become a physician without certain foundational elements of growth. So I think it can go any direction, but it depends on what you want to do ultimately. Well, so that, that, that's interesting. You said, what do you want to do ultimately? Because I was going to ask, when does your foundation, building your foundation truly begin? Because, you know, I think maybe early on, right? Like, all right, you got to get that confidence. Confidence is instilled in you early on. I think you can also develop confidence, but certain sometimes I think conf- like certain things, like certain intangibles. Confidence is instilled in you? It can be instilled in you early on. Because like, let's say, for example, if your family's supporting you, you might have a tremendous confidence going out into the world. Whereas if, if you're not getting that support, 
you might not be that confident. Okay. So you might okay. be a little more reserved. That's what I'm coming from. Yep. Got it. Got it. So, I mean, sense. so that's what I was thinking of initially. But then I'm also realizing, too, people gain confidence all the time. So, I mean, you can build, you can sort of build a foundation maybe later on in life, too. So I was wondering, when do you think that foundation truly begins? Is it early on or is it just whenever your journey, be, like whenever is it ad hoc, I guess? Man, it reminds me of a sales thing we used to say, soon and often. You know, soon when do you close a sale? Soon and often. When do you build a foundation? Mm -hmm. Soon and often. It's kind of like reaping the harvest and sowing the seed prior to reaping the harvest. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what this winter is going to look like. You do know that you're going to need something to eat. Right. But the one thing you definitely know is you're not going to have nothing if you don't sow those seeds. Mm -hmm. So sowing the seeds is building the foundation. You don't necessarily know all of the requirements that you're going to need, but you know you're going to need something. I'm a keynote speaker. So part of the foundation is to be able to get up on stage and speak with a coherent thought to an audience. Mm. That can be done in all different types of ways and all different types of audience. But the basic foundation that I need to work on all of the time is the ability to articulate the English language in a way that other people understand. Right. And same thing if you're doing physical things, right? If you're planning on being in any kind of physical activity, then you need to get in shape, whether you're a basketball player, sports or golf or a construction work or anything that requires lifting or endurance mm. uh, and cardio, then at some point you should have been getting yourself in shape. You don't know what you're going to end up doing ultimately. Right. You just have goals, desires, dreams, aspirations. Mm -hmm. But you do know that in order to do any of that kind of stuff, there's a basic foundation. Yeah. So you start soon. And then what about the unknown? Right. Yeah. There's so many things that I, I'm trained in the Boy Scouts. We trained in first aid. Mm -hmm. Hope we never need it. Mm -hmm. But should anything happen, I know how to do it. I know how to tie, you know. 12, 15 knots. Mm -hmm. All right. How often do I tie knots? Well, we tie them on our shoes and everything else. Right. But there are certain knots that when you need them, you need knots, them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking it starts maybe early on that foundation. Because like there's certain things that I know I, I guess, take with me nowadays mm -hmm. that I feel like kind of, I don't know, started when I was younger. Like just how I, how I view people, how I view the world. I kind of want to keep that same mindset. Like, obviously, I've grown and evolved and realized some things are like just, you know, a dream and whatnot. But I, I do think some of my, a, a solid amount of my foundation came from like early on. But where did it come from? Like, did you just decide I'm going to give myself a foundation? Or were there other people that saw something that you didn't or had influence over that? And as a result of others, you mm -hmm. now have a foundation. It might be the result of others, but. When I say results of others, it's like I thought, OK, well, maybe I need to change this because I initially like. Like, for example, OK, so I, I like sports. I love sports. I knew I always wanted to do something in sports. But then when I also thought about it, saying that out loud at a certain point in time, I'm like, eh, that might not sound the best. It might not sound the most mature, whatever the case may be. But so I always thought maybe sports, even an anime, I want to do that. And I guess now I'm kind of realizing, well. I, I let others kind of sway my decision making. And like, I thought I had like a pretty solid foundation early on. So I guess that's where I'm coming from with it now. It's like, I, I assumed, I guess back then I had a solid foundation. I just let it change. And I'm curious if other people felt that same way too. I mean, Simone Biles, mm -hmm. one of the greatest female gymnasts in the world. Well, actually the greatest now. And so the point is, where did her foundation come from, right? Yeah. So I think it's a journey that we all walk. And as we are walking that journey, we discover things along that walk. Mm -hmm. You know, I hike. So in the woods, I may come across certain different plants that I can eat. So I'm like, I can't. So if I'm hungry, I'll eat. Or I may throw some stuff in my pocket. Right. I come across water I can drink. So as you walk in the journey, you have an opportunity to learn, to experience, to grow from that moment. Now, that's a choice. So to your point, some things came because other people helped you to have that foundation. Right. But as you're walking your journey, you get choices every single day. And 10 years from now, when you look back <clears throat> and you wish you made a better choice, mm -hmm. which would have given you the foundation mm -hmm. for 10 years hence to do this thing that you want to do, 
that you don't have the foundation for, that's called <laughs> wake up call experience. Yeah. And now what do you do for the next 10 years, right? Yeah. And so it, it's just dynamic for everybody and yeah. cultures and and people, you know, and, and, and just needs. It, you could take 10 million different people and have 10 million different foundations. That's fair. That's fair. Now, it is it wise, I guess, to see someone else's foundation, realize, you know, you want to make a change? No, actually, no, better question. Can you change a foundation? And how easily can you change one if so? So I think you can build upon a foundation. Mm -hmm. To that extent, you are changing. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's hard to erase a foundation. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe that you can build upon foundations. Okay. I okay. went to Greek, Greece one time, and we were walking across this glass floor, a big floor, it wasn't just a small floor, but it was overlooking an entire city. So they built the city on a city and built another city on that city. This city, this city we could see because it was a glass floor. Right. Well, once upon a time, that city was a foundation. Yeah. And then it became the foundation for another city. Yeah. So I think that that's the building blocks. That's walking the journey. You can change your foundation. My foundation was poor kid from the projects. Okay. Yeah. Food stamps. You know, government assistance. You know, living in the hood, lunch tickets to go to school and get a lunch meal. Whatever. That was my foundation. And so I built upon that. Okay. Okay. So your upbringing, essentially, you would say that was the class. That's what you classify as your foundation person. I know you find you, you defined yourself as a hustler. Mm -hmm. So you, okay. Um, that, was, that was my actual next question. Like, what was the foundation of a hustle? So it sounds like it's just, it, it, it's, it's catered towards you, your lifestyle, your upbringing, what makes you up in the day, your DNA, your makeup. So, um, and, 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 but I mean, all right. I'm about to say that sounds like a good way to end the show right there. I don't it's know. All entertainment it. until it's not. Exactly. Because <laughs> when it's not, it's actually living life. That's the quality one. That's the quality one, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but listen, thank you all for listening. Hope you all enjoyed it so far. Please like, subscribe, comment, tell anyone who's anyone about the show. Uh, my name is Trey, and as you heard earlier, this is Reggie. And, uh, you know, we're just on uh, Just Living Life. That's what <laughs> that's what we on today. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care. Yo, yo. Yo, yo.